You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Hi, I'm Joe Heath. I'm Tony Heath. And this is the Watchathon of Rassilon presents the Watchathon of Raff and Don. How long did you spend thinking about that? Well, I've mentioned it in previous podcasts. All right. <laughs> so months. Months. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the 2003 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series, animated series, uh, season 4, episode 19, Insane in the Membrane, which was originally supposed to air March 4th, 2006, no my way! birthday, uh, but uh, was released online later. Also our birthday. Oh, the podcast. Podcast. <laughs> I thought, what? <laughs> oh, so you share your birthday with me now. <laughs> okay. I was like, we got married in August, right? Yeah. Uh, just look at our save the date. I can never remember if it was August or September because our dating anniversary is September. Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, so it was originally supposed to air March 4th, 2006 uh, in the United States, but was released online later, then finally aired August 2nd, 2015. Uh, it aired other wares. <laughs> other wares? Just not in the U.S. Just not in the U.S. True facts! Yes. Since this is your podcast. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. What, what do you know about that? Well, so first I want to say, no, if you listen to the podcast or have met Joe, you might be saying, hey, why are you watching season four, episode 19 for your pilot episode of the 2003 Ninja Turtles cartoon? And it's because I want people to know that the cartoon is really good. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know if I could do that by reviewing the first episode. <laughs> I don't even remember what the first episode is like, to be honest. But uh, but this they one... They fight th- mousers. You're right, they do fight mousers. Why do you know that? I've seen it. <laughs> anyway, this is an episode that I think is particularly good and has kind of an interesting story as far as like the story behind the episode. So this episode didn't air... In the United States, because it was basically too much. (laughs) I don't know. You were watching it, and you didn't have... You've never seen this one before. No, I've seen, uh, like, two seasons, I think. Maybe a little more. So I've not seen this one. So you see... Well, I have now, but... The thing about the 2003 Ninja Turtles cartoon is that it's... Is that I think it's much better than the people who are paying to make it thought that it could be. (laughs) And part of this might just be that this cartoon is very much, like, one of my first ever comfort shows. And part of it is just that it's it's a four kids cartoon that, like, sticks very close to the source material of the comics. That, like, leads for it have, having a very odd tone. Ninja Turtles as a franchise is kind of fascinating to me in that they started as this, like, goofy parody. And then, like, the longer it goes on, the more it's just like a really it's just really solid you know characters and storytelling and then the iteration of it that's the most famous has like the almost like opposite where like it's just like a really goofy i think i do think it's it's, the original pilot of the cartoon sticks really close to the i think it does but it's still more kid friendly like you said you said it like starts goofy and stuff but it's it's like a parody of daredevil but it's taking itself seriously yes it's a well. That's it's why not yes. like it starts as a parody. That's why I should have said. Yeah, but it's, it's a parody really of goofy. like dark, gritty things. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think. Of a but lot also, of... just is like very good in its own right. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people know Ninja Turtles from the '80s cartoon, and that's like the silliest version of them all. Yes. Do you know what's my favorite though? And I've never read any of them. Is that the like Arch? So the Archie comics mm-hmm. have like the style. Of the 80s cartoon and start like from the 80s cartoon. 
and then start going into, like, the source material. <laughs> so you have these, like, big cartoony, like, goofy Ninja Turtles just getting into, like, d- darker and darker situations. They're, I've never read them. We should. They're fascinating to me. I mean, if we continue this podcast, I'd like to do all things Ninja Turtles. But... They're fascinating to me as, like, an evolution. <laughs> I mean, I could be wrong about this, but I think the Archie comics literally were just adapting episodes to begin with. And then they ran out. Right. And then they get, as they go on, and it's, I don't know, they fascinate me. But, yeah. and I and I think the re- part of the reason why I picked this episode is because it's, it's a very good example of that fascination of, like, the weird space that Ninja Turtles frequently <laughs> occupies. Yeah. Of, like, yes, this is a children's cartoon that's, like, 20, not even 20 minutes long. I think it's under that. Possibly. Um, but also, like... I don't know, just deals with things or like goes places that you, especially as like a kid in 2003, wouldn't expect. So yeah, that's why, that's why this episode. I'd say out of all the Ninja Turtles that I've seen personally, it probably has the most depth out of any of them, perhaps. Yeah. Vi- like I don't want to like the... oversell it, but. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's definitely some like, some of the voice acting isn't the greatest and the scripts are maybe a little flat sometimes, but like, I don't know, they do interesting stories and stuff. Yes. I'd say probably, it's probably my, I mean, I really like the original movie. I think it's probably the best version. Mm, I really like the 2000, the 2007 TMNT. I think that was a hugely underrated iteration of the Ninja Turtles. I like it as well. I don't like it as much as the original movie though. That's fair. I mean, there's there's also a lot like, what was your first exposure to it? And mm-hmm. yeah, because like I don't know, like I was saying, like a lot of people know the '80s cartoon, and they have a lot of nostalgia for that. But you had nostalgia for this one, or the 2003 cartoon. Yeah, and there was like a thing too, where like there was, like, you know, when you're like really into something, and people are like, "Oh, you love Ninja Turtles? Here's this." And then I would get like a bunch of like people would buy me like stuff from the '80s cartoon, and I would be like, "Thanks, this means nothing to me." Yeah. <laughs> But I'm like, the version I like, it's much cooler. <laughs> they don't have pupils in the version I like. <laughs> Do we want to talk about the actual episode? Yeah, yeah. I, I wrote a summary. So, since I've never seen this before, yes. I wrote a summary so that you can tell me how accurate it is. Okay, yeah. Here's the summary of Insane and the Membrane. After losing all of his body parts other than his brain and a singular eyeball as punishment... For failing the shredder multiple times, Baxter Stockman gets himself a new super strong clone body. However, it soon starts falling to pieces, leading him to follow the blame chain back to April O'Neil. The blame chain? Yep. He kidnaps her for some vengeance while being played by hallucinations of his mother. Also, the turtles are doing stuff, I guess. That's your summary? <laughs> That's my summary. It is true. Honestly, I can't remember what the turtles do in all of this episode. <laughs> To be fair, they don't do much. This is an episode that focuses mainly on uh, Baxter Stockman. Secondarily, April. And the the turtles kind of... I mean, like, literally most of the episode is is Baxter Stockman, like, his point of view, like, working on... Making the, his new body. Working on the body that he's building. Getting backstory about, like, him as a child. And the turtles kind of show up at the end. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure nothing bad happens to April. That's literally it. And they steal a helicopter. I think the episode begins with them hunting monsters or something that feels like whatever is happening that season that's just briefly touched upon. Yeah, I can tell you what it is. As far as I remember, the the, mutagen, the mutagen got like exposed. Like lots of animals and stuff got exposed to it. So there are mutants everywhere. And they're not like cool, friendly ninjas. They're just monsters. <laughs> Okay, that makes sense, I guess. And that's that's kind of the deal of that season. But yeah, it's like enough, they're in the beginning enough to establish like, yep, that's what's happening. And then this whole episode focuses on why Baxter Stockman is the way that he is <laughs> as like a person. So uh, for people that mostly probably know Baxter Stockman as the fly guy yeah. in the 80s cartoon, um, how would you describe Baxter Stockman in this specific cartoon of uh, the 2003 series? Uh, I mean, he's kind of your average, uh, mad scientist, I guess. And that he is, I don't know, his major character flaw, I guess, is probably his arrogance. His hubris. 
I am also fascinated by like the mousers because they're so this I mean this is just a comic book thing but you like look at those and you're like those are so expensive. They're like a, a super expensive robotics and in theory therefore catching mice they're supposed to <laughs> they're supposed to combat the rat problem in New York City and it's like how much did they drop on these robotic mousers and also they have like guns inside of them like <laughs> like the sentinels <laughs> Oh God! I can't. St- I can't stop thinking about the Sentinels and X Men. To be clear, and yes, the Sentinels and X Men—they're huge. The amount of damage they do in apprehending a single person is outrageous. That's not what we're talking about. We we're should. Talking, we're talking about Ninja Turtles. Okay, but sen- Sentinels and Mousers do have the same problem. Where like Mousers will just chew through like important infrastructure. <sighs> to be fair, in in Ninja Turtles, that ultimately what happens is that. <laughs> the city's like, whoa, that's messed up. And Baxter, that's why Baxter Stockman ends up working for the Shredder. Mm-hmm. Because he, like, loses that. And that's why, in this episode, he kind of blames April O'Neil. Because April O'Neil started, was originally working, working for him. working for uh, Baxter Stockman on these mousers. <sighs> what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember now. I, you, I mean, you were asking me about Baxter Stockman and yeah. to describe him. Yeah. He is. He's just kind of this mad scientist who works with the Shredder because the Shredder, I don't, um, has access to technology. Alien technology? I don't know if people know that. He's an, he's an alien in this one. Shredder's? U- Utron? Shredder's an alien. I don't know if you know that. I know that. And basically every time he fails, which is kind of a brutal thing for a kid's show. It's never shown or anything like that, but like, you know, something will go wrong and then he'll get like carried off. And then like the next episode, he just won't have a hand. Like, and that, like that progresses throughout, throughout the show until we reach this point. That's actually something I didn't know. Here's the thing. I knew that this episode was banned and I knew it was like, Baxter Stockman loses all of his body parts for failing the Shredder. And I thought that's what the episode you was. You thought that's why it got banned? Yeah, it was because, like, he's losing all his body parts until he's just, there's nothing left of him. But that's not why this episode, that's the lead up to this episode. That yeah, stuff that's, didn't get banned. That stuff's all in the show. It's in a, uh, like, they do a little montage at the bit, like a previously on to yeah. show that he's lost all of his body. And I was like, wait. This happened before this episode. I thought this was the episode and why it got banned. So I no, was, like, confused. It's, this is what I'm saying. Like, this show can be really brutal. And it's bizarre because you'll have, like, sometimes it's brutal and sometimes there's, like, goofy filler episodes. <laughs> and that's just it's just the way cartoons are. But I'm still really thrown by it. Yeah, isn't there, like, some that where it's one of the turtles just becomes, like, a superhero? Just... Yeah, but that one's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but it's goofy. But it's goofy, yeah. yeah. That's what's so fascinating to me about this iteration is that it's... I don't know if I want to use the word uneven? Varied. Yeah, yeah. If there's like a if there's like a litmus, litmus test of like if I'm going to enjoy a show, that's probably it. Like, is the tone shift between episodes going to make me go, Hey, what? <laughs> what am I watching? Then I'll probably like it. <laughs> right. Because I... Honestly, I'm kind of a fan of that feeling of being, like, hit with different, like, oh, okay, we're in this mode now. Okay, mm-hmm. got it. I'm on board. So I once I realized that's not what the episode was about, I was like, well, then why did this get banned? Like, I don't think it should be banned, but I was like, that sounds like a, a reason plausible, why somebody would. Yeah, a plausible reason somebody would, would want this banned. And then when the episode started, it was still even like, I don't, there's nothing too bad here. And what was the moment? The moment, we, so he gets inside of his new clone body, and then it starts falling apart. And that's what made me go, oh my god. Because, <laughs> like, what is it? His finger falls off, and it's just gooey. Oh, it's so... It's so gooey. Wet. It's bad. And that's on screen. Yes. That's not implied. You see it. And then, like, more of him, like, his arm, you can just see his bone. Like, there's just muscle and bone, and it's just... Oh, it's gross. Do you it's know what, gross. What's amazing, though, is that he has metal underwear that appears to be <laughs> just part of the body. And there's also this weird thing where he's super strong, but also falling apart. <laughs> I don't entirely understand the logic of that. Because he's like, 
I don't know, just lifting up huge things and throwing them, but also, like, he types something on a keyboard and his finger falls off. <laughs> and it's you gross. didn't say the thing that really got me, What's which that? is his jaw oh, falling his off. Oh, his jaw falls off, yeah. Oh, that's towards the end, right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. He, like, shoves it back on. Yeah. I Ugh. think, though, what's interesting about this is... It's not just body horror. No, and and again, like keep in mind, two thousand three, right? Two thousand three, like Saturday morning cartoon. <laughs> Technically, this was two thousand six. Sure. <laughs> um, well, I think what was very interesting to me about it was like spending an entire episode of like here is this villain's backstory and like they're a person, you know, like they're a person with like people who care about them and who like I don't know had hopes and dreams for the future and got into this situation. I do think there's something you could th- see how it could have gone down a different path. Yeah, I do think there's something to be said about. It would not surprise me if everybody involved in the writing of this episode was white, I think. Uh, and and how there might be some, like, stereotypes at play there. Right. Her accent is a little, like, southern. Right. Yeah, where it's like, uh, I thought, do you not live in New York? <laughs> <laughs> or it's also just like, what if Baxter Stockman was, like, raised by a single mom who was always working? And yeah. that's why he's like that. I mean, that's. I don't think they say that's why he's like that. In fact, I think it's more like the mom is there to kind of, I mean, humanize him, I guess. Because, like, it starts with him, like, he's basically about to torture or kill some bug, right? Yeah. And then she comes in and is, he doesn't. I think she doesn't, like, stop him, but, like, she doesn't know what he's he's doing that, but. He's got, he's got, like, a a DIY chemistry set and he, like, catches this bug and he's gonna drop it in what is presumably, like, acid or something. And then he decides to let it go and, like, lets it out the window. But I think he specifically does that, like, after she comes in and, like, does, like, a, I'm so proud of you speech. Yeah. Not like she's like, don't do that. And then he stops. It's just, like, he gets interrupted and then she comes in and is like, I'm so proud of you and I've got high hopes for you and you're, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then he... Then he decides to not kill the bug. And then he's haunted by visions of her. Yes. It's, I think it's very interesting to me. Like, because essentially what this episode is doing is, like, making him the most monstrous he's ever been and the most human he's ever been at the same time. That's a pretty interesting premise for a cartoon episode. <laughs> and what a weird... Like, how did that affect the continuity of the show? Because that seems... Because, like, when he falls into the river at the end or something, and he possibly, does. you're like, is he dead or not? Here's the but thing. How did that affect, like, because that's a pretty big event. It doesn't matter, because nothing super past the fourth season is any good. <laughs> I don't I don't think you were that far from, I want to say it's season five where they get into all the, like. Flash forward. I think season six is actually flash, where they go to oh. the future and the animation style changes. And I they get it. pupils, right? They don't get pupils until the second season in the future. Like, so, like something about being in the future makes them get pupils. Don't like it. But also, there's the season before flash forward where it's fine, but it's also like the majority of it is about like them getting supernatural powers and stuff. They're like, and they're starting to set up like flash forward and basically meh meh they go to the future the anim they it looks like lose all their animation budget although i say that i was like so you know when like flash forward happened and i was like this looks shitty and then we like go back and we watch the original 2003 show and i'm like i mean it's not like this was great (laughs) it's not like this was stunning animation (laughs) i like what you pointed out while we were watching this episode it's just like there's absolutely nobody on the streets. New York is permanently empty. <laughs> you know how New York is famously deserted at all times? <laughs> yeah, no. There's... No wonder they can keep their secret that they're turtles. That There's just nobody fucking around. There's nobody there. Did somebody say they're like, oh, that's because of the shredder. <laughs> the shredder. Probably. The foot. The foot keeps people off the streets, which is very convenient for the people who have to draw the streets. <laughs> I think Vince may have said that. I think it was Vince. Vince is also a huge Ninja Turtle fan. Uh, the person who... Uh, That's partially how we met. Yeah. Vince is the uh, the person who makes our theme song and has been on the podcast many a time. I, like, followed Vince on Twitter and then, like, retroactively realized we were on a lot of the same forums. <laughs> for Ninja Turtles. <laughs> for Ninja Turtles. 
I say a lot. It was really just the tech outro. There's almost a part of me that's, like, regretting picking this episode just because I don't have a lot to say about the turtles. <laughs> Specifically because they're... it's about Baxter Stockman? Because it's about Baxter Stockman, the turtles literally aren't in it that much. No. I honestly can't remember, like, any lines they have or anything. I remember they steal a helicopter. That, yeah. that It's the Vinch... Like, they say, like, oh, it's Baxter's... Or, I think they say it's Baxter Stockman's helicopter it's or something. Ba- yeah. But, like, they don't say that until well after they've stolen it. And I'm like, where the hell did this where helicopter come from? Where did this helicopter come, come from? from? It is great. Like, oh, they, uh, they, uh, they have the new battle van. Yes. That's Tortuga, Tortuga moving van. When that happened and, like, he's got the battle van and, like, Donnie's showing off what it can do. And there's, like, fucking missiles inside of it. And we're watching that and I just turned to Joe and I was like, that all makes sense. <laughs> you might be wondering, where did this where did this turtle that lives in the sewers get missiles? But they have access to alien technology at that point, and this all tracks. <laughs> if I know anything about ninjas, it's that they love missiles. <laughs> <laughs> and also that missiles are a, a fine and necessary thing to have on yep. a van. Yep. <laughs> what are they? Do they use that at all? Do they go around and blow shit up? I don't honestly or remember. Or they just have that to sell toys? <laughs> I I mean, I actually have, like, a lot of questions for you since okay. you saw it for the first time. Sure, sure, sure. So I think my first question is, would you have aired this? Yes. Absolutely. Like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> my favorite things growing up were the things that scarred me. So, <laughs> But also, like, just from the standpoint of, like, this is a, seems... This like, is also, I should say, I, I'm pretty sure it's, like, TV 13. It's not, when I say kid show... Actually, I don't think it is. I don't know. I don't think it's, like, for teens. I thought it was rated TV 13. No, look it up. When did we start putting TV ratings on things? Does it even have one? It's TV Y7. TV Y7? Yeah. Wow, okay. You, you know what else is TV Y7? It's Steven Universe, and that's got some fucked up shit in it, I too, was so. thinking, you know, when I was saying, like, it has that, like, when I was describing Ninja Turtles, I was like, the, oh, the other show that has that, like, weird, sometime you're going to turn it on and we're going to do an episode about why friendship is important and I'll sing a song. And sometimes we're going to be talking about war. Or an episode where, like, he just gets so stressed out that a monster blows out of his back. <laughs> I yeah. don't, it has, it has a very similar vibe. But yeah, I would definitely have aired this because you could maybe edit down some of the body horror a little bit if you're worried about the rating or whatever. But like, I feel like it's an important episode for characterization and plot. Like, it seems like a big deal like to just cut out. Like, again, I'd say maybe try to like appeal it or or like edit it just a little bit. Like, really cut out the finger or just apl- imply I really, the finger. I really or the feel jaw. like the jaw thing has to be a lot of it. The finger and the jaw. Those are the two worst. Second question. Sure. Worry, I mean, would you have been surprised if you had seen this? No. I don't think so. Really? Yeah, I've seen plenty of gross stuff. I mean, you seemed surprised when we watched it. I mean, it's surprising, for (laughs) sure. But I wouldn't have been like, they're airing this? Especially when I was a kid. Because I would just watch stuff. That's true. You're, (laughs) like, you don't, you aren't shocked by those things when you were a kid. Because you're just like, yeah, that makes sense. I feel like children are, like, especially in, like, imagining things or telling stories, children are brutal. Also, like, the kid shows, like, when I was a kid were like, you know, ah, real monsters and Bump in the Night and Ren and Stimpy. And, like, they're all gross. I didn't really like Ren and Stimpy. I but they're all gross. I hated Ren and Stimpy. Like, I'm pretty sure there's been worse things on all three of those shows. <laughs> uh, what'd you think about it? I liked it. I thought it was good. The, like, again, the characterization of Baxter Stockman is interesting. I mean, there's definitely some, like, this is a kid's show stuff, but it's a kid's show. So, um, I do wish there had been a little bit more turtles in it, but I, it, you know, as an episode, it's an episode that's focused on Baxter, and that's fine. You need those. I yeah. also, I also do like episodes that, you know, sort of move away the main focus from, the focus away from the main characters. It is, it is a little weird doing it as a pilot episode. We're talking about Ninja Turtles, and they're, barely in it it's like if we did like if we started our doctor who podcast on blink or something <laughs> i think i did just want to get Mission to the unknown to talk about like hey there is a there one there an episode there's bands. yeah one there's a version of of the ninja turtles that is my favorite version that i feel like no one knows about some t- sometimes you know mm-hmm. i feel like no one else watched it when i was watching it two 
it's interesting enough that like episodes got banned. There was one. There's another one that got banned that didn't get made. That never got made, and that was so. There's a character called the Garbage Man, and he rules a place called Junglantis. And there was like going to be an episode where it was revealed that he was actually Hun, and Hun's the like main foot henchman. Him and Hun were like. Twins? Possibly even conjoined twins? I might I be so. misremembering that part. I think it might have been. But, like, he got thrown away. Into the garbage. Into the garbage, and that's, like, his, like, origin, origin story. I think that got nixed <laughs> you know what? before that, any, like... That wasn't just, like, network people. That was also Peter Laird. Was it really? Yeah, he's like, I don't know about this one. He actually pitched some alternate takes, and they even changed the story a little bit. So, what... Like, the same gist was there, but, like, throwing a baby in a dumpster didn't happen. (laughs) Which, you know what? That might have been the right call. I'm not knocking knocking that. That might have been a bit much. And also, here's... I don't know. I also feel like when you're a kid, the episodes where you're like, that might have been a bit much are also, like, your favorite ones. Mm -hmm. Because you kind of feel like you're getting away with something. (laughs) You almost have that moment where, like, you feel like you're being a grown-up, I guess. You know? (laughs) Yeah. And as a kid, that's very cool. <laughs> but yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. That's, that's maybe not a baby in a dumpster. That was probably, that might have been the right call. <laughs> Do you have any other questions for me? You want to you wanna watch the rest of this? I mean, yeah. I, we've watched, uh, we've watched, like I said, we watched about two seasons. Uh, the, the reason we stopped is because at the time we were, I bought a bunch of the DVDs and they're all out of order. Okay, you want to talk about something being... The the difference of idea of what something is by the people making it versus the people, like, distributing it and paying for it to be made. The DVDs have, like, four episodes per a disc, and they're mm-hmm. just random. And I'm sure the thought was, like, well, it's a kid's show. Who gives it? Who cares? Right. It's not like it's got, like, an overarching plot. It does... And it's very annoying. But I, I'd be more interested in it now that it's streaming on Paramount. Because yes. that's in order and I don't have to like take DVDs in and out. Yeah, because you've been saying that we don't have a 20 minute or a 30 minute show. Well, that's true. And so that could be our short show. It could be. I do want to take a moment to talk about the characterization of the turtles in this version of the show. Go for it. How would you describe each of them in this version? Uh, Johnny does, does machines. machines. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, they're, they're all pretty much the way they they generally are characterized, I feel like. Or, then again, I don't know. I was going to say, because I have a lot of strong feelings about what you just said, but okay. My, Mikey's the funny one, Donnie's the, the geek, Leo's the leader, and Raph is the hothead. I feel like you can rank the quality of a Ninja Turtles iteration of a franchise. There's got to be something less clunky than that. Nope, go for it. <laughs> All right. You can you can rank the Ninja Turtle iterations based on solely the by quality based solely on the characterization of Michelangelo. Is he just fucking obnoxious? Bottom tier. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think there's a difference between funny and stupid. Well, also, it's not even just like is he the funny one because it's also like <sighs> There's there's more room for just mm-hmm. being the funny one. Like he's also like the most. He's first the of all, that kid's got ADHD. He's the most like naturally talented and the least disciplined. He's the most emotionally sensitive. You know, like the most empathetic. I'm a Michelangelo. <laughs> <laughs> but I would also say that the same could be said for the characterization of Leonardo. Because growing up, I've always been like, I fucking hate. Because he's the, like, he's the leader and the one always being like, you can't do things. He's the dad. Yeah. He's the narc of the group. <laughs> but I will say the, um, oh, what what, what was the, the Nickelodeon, the 3D one? The first Nickelodeon yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like 2000 something. I don't remember. 2013? 2013. That was one of the first okay, ones maybe. where I was like, oh, I kind of like get Leo as a character actually. And I don't know if that's my age. <laughs> uh-huh. Or just that that version of the character was written really well. I will say that that same iteration also has the worst characterization of Donatello, mm. who is just... Stalkery? Yes! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone tell that kid no means no! His weird obsession with April. Yeah. yeah. 
But I have that I have that feeling specifically about Michelangelo because probably because Michelangelo has always been my favorite. And I just sometimes feel like they just they do just make Raph just a hothead and that's it. Yeah, if Raph is just angry, Raph is angry because he cares about things. <laughs> And because fundamentally, like, the world is a very unfair place. If you're not mad about that, <laughs> like, you should be. <laughs> they can all be reduced to these, like, the leader, the funny one, does machines, <laughs> and angry. And I think the degree to which they are allowed to be multidimensional beyond that is like, okay, now these are characters and now we can, now we can tell a story and there's going to be meat here. <laughs> I think it's interesting in the live action movies donnie isn't the machine i mean he like i think he does some mechanic work at one point but he doesn't really do machines in the movie he's just the other funny one <laughs> he kind of is yeah you got the goofy silly mikey and then the sarcastic witty donatello <laughs> they're just two different comedy characters that's a little bit because it is kind of leo and raf the movie <laughs> <laughs> Splinter's not in this episode at all. No. I don't know if that's for plot reasons or just he's just not in it. He's, I mean, I wouldn't say he's in every episode. No. He's not in a lot of them. And I mean, in fact, I don't even, is he there when they go to space? <laughs> they go to space. This is a good cartoon. <laughs> what do you have to say about uh, April? April's fine. There are better portrayals of April. There are worse portrayals of April. This one's solidly okay. Casey's straight up himbo in this this I, version. Do you love that? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Casey's one of my favorite characters. I don't... Describe that to me. Explain that to me. Because he's so dumb, for one. But he's... I think there's you so much love potential. love a himbo. I do. There's so much potential for that character. And I feel like they don't always do it. I feel sometimes it's just like, he's the badass guy. But like... I think he's a parody of badass guys. Mm. Like, he in the comic books, he's just a guy that, like, watched a bunch of dumb action movies and is, like, just roided up, basically. He's just like, yeah, fuck yeah. But he's an idiot. He has no discipline or anything. He's just, I feel like he teams up with the Turtles and, well, specifically with Raph, right? Yeah, their relationship's really and they, good. They kind of, like, balance each other out a little bit, I think. Like, he learns Raph's from Raph and Raph is like, oh, I don't need to be this. <laughs> like, Raph looks at Casey and goes... Oh, that's not me, is it? <laughs> right. So I think they, like, help bring each other to a tolerable level. That's what I like about Casey. Is he's, like, a parody of just, like, this, like, macho masculinity thing. But being a parody also allows him, like, this arc. Yeah. You know, of, like, growing from that. Because, like, the, again, the best versions of Casey are very emotionally intelligent, very mm -hmm. sensitive, doing what he's doing because he cares about people and going about it in a terrible way because of, like, I don't know. He's a big, dumb, beefy guy. <laughs> he cares, but he's dumb. <laughs> God, there is nothing better than a himbo with a heart of gold. Yeah, I love Casey. <laughs> Anything if else? Casey was in our Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Yeah, you would date him. Probably. <laughs> I've been dating all the himbos in our our uh, D and D campaign. <laughs> <laughs> it's just what Bronk would do. Bronk is also super into himbos. We should do a podcast where we just describe our Dungeons and Dragons campaign because <laughs> there's some good shit in there, and it's sad that only four people are aware of it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just. We don't have more to say about this episode. I just don't want to... I want to get to keep talking about the Ninja Turtles. Well, I say we should take a break. Okay. And then when we come back, I have a question for you. Okay. So let's listen to an ad, why don't we? What will you do when your child asks? What were Saturday morning cartoons? What were Saturday morning cartoons? What's wrong with you? Or will you handle it the right way? Sit down, baby girl. Let me introduce you to my friend, Mark McRae. Join Dan Clink and I on the Best Saturdays of Our Lives podcast as we take a unique behind-the-scenes look at the history and dynamics of animation with plenty of laughs along the way. The Best Saturdays of Our Lives podcast is a proud member of the ESO Network. And we're back. Tony, I have a final question for you. It's not about this version of the Ninja Turtles. Okay. How do you feel about the new Ninja Turtles movie coming out? 
I want to see it so bad. The trailer that I've seen so far, I mean, honestly, it looks really good. Mutant Mayhem. As much as I love, you know, the 2003, the version that we're talking about, as much as I love this version, mm. I do also really love it when somebody says, can we actually give these characters, like, four distinct designs? Other than just the color of yes. their bandanas? Instead of just drawing the same drawing four times with different, and then coloring the bandanas differently, can they have, like distinct designs that make sense for their distinct personalities. So already that win. The original comics, they didn't even have that. They didn't. <laughs> Again, yeah, it is what it is when they don't do that. I get, I do get really excited when, when like some design work does go into it. Right. <laughs> yeah, they were all red in the original comics. I mean, the original comics oh, aren't in black and white, but they're, they're red. Uh, uh, I assume the covers were color. Yeah. So they were all rafts originally just just speaking of design the trailer gave me like a um spider-verse vibe Mm -hmm. of like comic booky artwork and fucking style like (laughs) fucking intentional thoughts and design where it just has like it's it looks like it's gonna have a cool vibe artwork wise and april looks rad i have to say april does look rad and also Anybody who wants to fight me on this, there is, and huh, there is like historical basis for it. For Black April O'Neil, it there is historical basis in the original source material. There doesn't have to be, by the way. We can just make adaptations and make changes mm-hmm. um, to anything at any time for any reason, and it's fun and it's neat, and we should do it. <laughs> <laughs> But also, if you were be- like if you were beholden to that fact, you're also just wrong. <laughs> because when the character was originally created, essentially you had, I mean, two different people drawing it, and one of them was drawing it based off a person of color, and one of them wasn't. And there's it fluctuates a lot, and by the time the comics get colored, they settle on white April. But when the character was conceived anyway, I won't get into it all. I will just forward you, I will just forward you some links. <laughs> <laughs> My point is, one, we should change things. Adaptation is great. Making changes to things is great. Two, even, even, even by your own logic, you're wrong. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> what else about the movie? I don't, it looks, it looks good. I'm super excited and I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, me too. It looks fun. Wild, wild cast list. Jackie Chan's in it. John Cena's in it. Literally, the trailer played. We went and we saw Dungeons and Dragons yesterday. The trailer played and the people behind us was like, what the fuck is that cast? And I was like, it's just Ninja Turtles. (laughs) I feel like there's not like a person out there who doesn't have like some version of the Ninja Turtles that if they're not at least aware of, they're at least a little fond of, you know? Yeah. And that's the thing. There's so many different versions. Yeah. I haven't even seen, I'd like, I haven't even seen the Nickelodeon shows. We started, I would like to. Yeah. We started watching the 2013 and just kind of fell away from it. And now there's like a new, new Nickelodeon the one. Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And I haven't even seen that. And I would like to, but. There's like multiple versions of the comics. Because you got the originals, you got the Archies. There's the IDW ones that uh, Brian Lynch worked on. Then you've got like the cartoon, the 80s cartoon. Then you got 2003, you got... The CG one, you got Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you have the live action movie, the CG movie, two more live action movies, uh, which we've seen the first one, but not the second one. You haven't even mentioned Next Mutation. (laughs) Oh, Next Mutation, the live action TV series. The only live action TV series that was apparently uh, bad. I kind of like to watch it. Oh, and uh, Turtles Forever. Oh, Turtles Forever was was pretty good. I haven't seen that one. And then there's uh, the Ninja Turtles Batman movie. I haven't seen that either. Yeah, we watched that. Did we watch that? No, we yeah. watched, I thought we watched Turtles Forever, but not the Batman one. I haven't seen Turtles Forever. I've seen the Batman one. We watched it together. Well, I watched Turtles Forever. Yeah. I don't remember the Batman one. Was it good? Yeah, it was pretty fun. All right. And now this new movie. Like, it's been rebooted so many times. It's just a solid... It's just a solid concept is the thing. It's just solid all the way around. Like, you look at that and you're just like, yeah, it's full of good pieces. Like, I think I've said this before on the podcast where, like, the ideal story or specifically, like, a a franchise or you're going, like, back and making something, it should feel like somebody playing with all their toys in a sandbox of just, like, you know, like, oh, you know what? This fits together this way. And what if we did this? And, like, 
Ninja Turtles is just like a sandbox full of really good toys. <laughs> you know what I think is interesting about it is that before the Netflix show dropped, uh, I would say that it was more popular than Daredevil. Yeah. And like, I feel like people knew what Ninja Turtles were and had no had idea. Had no idea what Daredevil was. That that it's a parody of Daredevil. God, there was a period of time too when when the Netflix show was really popular that I was like, why are we doing a Netflix Ninja Turtles show in the same sort of style? I'm, I mean, in just like actively like live parody Daredevil. Yeah, like that's what it's for. That's we should be, we should. And the moment's passed now. Yeah. I think it has become it has become separated from Daredevil, yeah, for sure. But like the the mutagen that like changes the turtles is also what blinded Matt. If it's the same event, it's the same event. Uh, I don't know if people know that. Yeah, like w- when he gets blinded, that stuff falls in the sewer and turns the turtles into turtles. You got that the, the hand, the hand and the foot. <laughs> like that's literally a direct. <laughs> <laughs> the foot is literally a direct parody. There's a character, there's a, a ninja trainer person in Daredevil called Stick, who splinter in Ninja Turtles. So, like, they're all there, and I don't know how many people are aware of that. And it just because it, like, it supplanted Daredevil in a way, you know? You, you know, that's how it started. It started as a parody, that, and th- that was the, the one-off, one-shot idea. But it's such a solid concept that it just kept going <laughs> and and it became its own thing. Uh, yeah. And I and I think that's awesome. And I love that about it. You just love Ninja Turtles. I love the Ninja Turtles so much. I love them so much. And part of that is directly because of this show. It was what I would watch, like, and I would watch it, you know, with X Men mm-hmm. and um, what else would come on at that time? X Men. The Ninja Turtles. There was like a there was like a after school block. I don't think X Men wasn't on the after school blocks because X Men I would actually was on like Jet X like late at night. The nineties X Men. I had thrown and the tick in there too. But. Also, when I would watch Spider Man, and then sometimes I never understood the Jet X schedule. And now that I think about it as an adult, they probably just didn't really have one because sometimes it would be like X Men and Spider Man, and sometimes it would be Spider Man and Friends. And I would get so mad when it was Spider Man and Friends. <sighs> Is that the like? earlier one that's kind of goofy yes again the people who like made and distributed kids cartoons didn't give a fuck about air order like you would get like four in a row of like an arc and then like a random one and then you'd be like wait i want to know what happened i want to know what happened with the city at war and now they're in space and i don't know why they're in space (laughs) actually again i think they go to space before city at war and that always throws me because space feels like such an acceleration yeah. But no. No, they go to space first. And then to be... Anyway. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what other what other shows were in that, like, that I would watch, you know, after school while not doing my homework. <laughs> and this was also my first, really my first fandom. There was something, too, about, like, not being able to watch things whenever you wanted, right? Like, it would... You would catch it when it aired, and then being the obsessive person that I was, like, spend the rest of my time thinking about it, and, like, that's when you end up, like, going online and being, like, are other people also think like... <laughs> Also waiting for the next thing to air and just thinking about like, oh man, the interaction that these two characters had, like, it's really good and like, I'd like their dynamic. I can't stop thinking about it. And like, a lot of the first like fan fiction that I read and I would lurk in other people's RP forums. (laughs) Did you ever RP? No. If you did, who would you play? I wouldn't. I, the, the idea of RPing stresses me out, I think. I don't know why I'm saying RP. Role playing. <laughs> but no, I would I would read other people's role playing forums because it was fanfic, you know? Right, yeah. There's one fanfic in particular that I remember where, and I know you know what it is because I was like telling you about it and then I found it and then I sent it to you and it like wasn't as good as I bad. remembered. You were like, there's this whole code and the code was like really cheesy. It was a pretty simple cipher, but at the time <laughs> I was breaking it by hand. Don gets like some sort of brain injury and like can't speak, but speaks in like a way that can be translated. And I think I really think it's like Rot Thirteen or something, or what is that called? Um, but it, it's a. It's or it was a, just backwards. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was a. It was a cipher. But and I would I would like read the fanfic in bed like before going to sleep, and I had like a pad of paper on my nightstand of where I had like 
broken the cipher and translated it all. And that was like how I spent a good chunk of my time. <laughs> That's very cute. And I just, I just love the Ninja Turtles so much. They're one of those characters. Have you, I don't know if you've ever done this as a child or an adult, but do you just like imagine yourself having conversations with like people or characters? Sometimes. I would do this with the Ninja Turtles all the time. Would just like mentally hang out with them. <laughs> I don't know if I ever went that far. Usually I was just trying to like come up with a story or something. No, it was literally just like me hanging out. I do like miss characters sometimes. There, it, it is like, it is almost like they're a version of like my imaginary friends, <laughs> you know? Sure. And I love them and I love this show. <laughs> If you'd like to hear Tony talk more about the Ninja <laughs> Turtles, y- y'all are going to have to pay for it. <laughs> this is a yet another one of or our Or literally pilots. just ask me because yeah. I really, I really want to. <laughs> really... They don't need a podcast to talk about Ninja I really Turtles. want to be talking about Ninja just Turtles at all times. That and Farscape. Two things you talk about. But uh, yes, if you like this and you want more of it, please check out our Patreon. Let us know if you like this episode. We would like to continue these pilots, but we need money to do that because we both have jobs and lives and it's hard. We did a whole bunch of pilots because one, eventually we are going to run out of even new who to do. Um, new who to do? New who to do. New who's also going to be, God, God willing, shorter. <laughs> and if it is, I'd love I'd love for there to be an opportunity for us to do a second podcast. And I think we, want, we wanted to explore what that might look like. And I have my yeah. favorites, but I have my favorites, too. (laughs) Uh, And speaking of helping us make these podcasts, I want to give a special shout out to our newest Patreon patron, Kaylin. And thanks, Kaylin. I hope that's how you pronounce that. I mean, it looks like Kaylin. C-A-E-L-A-N. You can follow them on Twitter at Does Crime. At Does Crime. At Does Crime. All right. Uh, I believe they do crime. Seems to be what their handle implies. I don't know if they're the same person as Kaylin Does Art, who is another friend of Rassilon. We, but, a Kaylin who does things. Yeah, we just, we attract them. <laughs> but uh, if you liked this episode of the podcast, you can check out more on WatchYourRassilon.com, see our other pilots. You can also find our podcast, our Patreon, and more at Linktree slash Watchathon. Uh, I'd also like to give a special shout out to Vince and EL for providing us with our amazing theme song. Thank you, Vince. If we continue this show, we could already use a previously <laughs> made Vince and EL song, Strike Hard oh, and Fade Away. We could, God. That is a good song. Check that song out. I'm going to put a, like a little yes. sample of it right here. While searching the sewage of some need, the rat sees four turtles fall from the street. Along with a canister of mutagen, the turtles will never be cute again. The rat took them in and raised them as sons. Stopped them in jitsu and gave them weapons. They're mean. They're green. You do best not to intervene. Give them hell. Give them shell. Give them the sword you won't live to tell. You can find the whole song on Vince's YouTube at youtube.com slash swinglish. And I believe they used a lot of clips from this very uh, TV show, uh, TMNT 2003. Uh, it may be entirely from the 2003 cartoon, uh, but the song samples uh, the 80s uh, intro. Anyway, you can hear even more of their music at vincentel.bandcamp.com. Why aren't Vince and I doing a TMNT podcast? They, yeah, you two should. You two should be doing the the Turtles podcast. I'll just guess. <laughs> Tune in next time when we talk about the Warehouse 13 pilot for our final pilot, Watchathon 13. Watchathon uh, 13. And then we'll be back for New Who. Rose. 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 I, I don't think I've seen Rose since watching it for the first time. And I'm prob- I probably... You watched it with me. Did I watch it with you? Yeah, because we started we started New Who together. I watched it for the first time, like because I remember you're like it. It gets better. <laughs> I was on a staring at that forum. plastic face, Mickey. Like Ugh. 
I was on a forum and other people in the forum were constantly talking about Doctor Who and I was like, I guess I should watch it. So it was into it was into Ten's era that I started watching nine. And it'll be it'll be interesting with drastically more amounts of context to watch Rose again. <laughs> <laughs> All of it pretty much. Yeah. I mean besides like I guess uh expanded material. But until next time, keep calm and wrestle on. Goodbye, and I love you in a platonic, parasocial way. Cowabunga! <laughs> back to Stockman is back in the flesh! The superb mind now housed within a superb body. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.